and what a fine boxing day it is. See, but I got a bit of a problem. I wonder if uh, I wonder if you can see it. Let's uh, zoom in here. You see it out there? <laughs> well, I took the kid 600 out for a ride, and it didn't even make it around the house, and that's where she died. My second problem is the temperature outside, which really kind of sucks. Hopefully you can see that thermostat. So minus, just about minus 30, minus 28 degrees Celsius for, for you guys down in the States, that's what? Minus 20 Fahrenheit? Yeah, she cold. But uh, I got half of it done, it was only minus 20 the other day. The, uh, the carbs are pretty scudged up. If you look closely at it here, I tried to... I did mention to the owner that... Uh... <laughs> so I was riding it and it was just basically running out of fuel. It wasn't running for poop and you can see it's uh, quite a bit of scudge in those carbs. And when I actually took it apart, I think this side here, that air jet there was completely frozen. This, all three holes here were just completely frozen solid. This one here is important, right? This would be your idle. <coughs> this, these carbs, for being a 99, this has got quite a bit of electronics on it. But uh, yeah, anyway, that was, uh, you can see all the belt dust and whatever, right? The problem with snowmobiles is you're not in a dusty environment, so they usually don't have an air filter. It's usually vented to the outside. I mean, it's like a marine, like a boat. You're not in a dusty environment, so you don't really need an air filter on it, but if you look down here, most of that is just belt dust. Because that's the only, only real thing that can get in there. So, I mean, the first time I bought this sled, when I, when I first bought this sled, the lady I bought it from said the engine was blown up in it. <clears throat> and I just cleaned the carbs and she ran beauty. She ran beauty. Yeah, I kind of, it was pretty cold the other day. It was uh, Christmas Eve. You know, the sled's been sitting out there for a couple days. I started taking it apart and I said, the hell with that. I'm not doing that now. Yeah, she needs a good bath. That's my project today. Get that sled out from down there. <laughs> Minus 30. Ooh, she's going to be cold. Well, it's been about a week. I've been incredibly lazy, I just don't want to do this job. But, uh, I gotta clean these carbs up. Probably can't tell, they're... Okay, the lighting really sucks, but they're really scudged up inside. They haven't been cleaned in quite a few years. When I first pulled them off and that sled died on me, I think it was this side, which side was it, yeah. Well, it was this side here. It was iced up, and that air jet right there was completely iced up, and it wasn't pulling any fuel because of that. And it would just go, eh, bleh, bleh, may not fire, and uh, yeah, so let's get these carbs all cleaned up. I don't know how much of this I'm going to film, it's just going to be scrubbing her down and soap and water bath, and take all this stuff off here. Uh, yeah, okay, why not? Talking to myself, might as well just film it all with the hay. I'm going to put this back on here, just to, just wanted to see how dirty it was. The bowls really are not that dirty, I mean, unless you're running like crappy fuel, dirty fuel, this stuff doesn't really get that dirty after a while. Just because there's no air filter on a snowmobile because you're not in a dusty environment, right? You're not like driving on a dusty road. There's no, there's not really an air filter on them. So a lot of this stuff is just belt dust. Okay, I'll bring you back when I'm busting them apart. I'm taking apart. They are now singles, and we'll bust them into them and uh, see what we can do about cleaning them up. So these, if you don't clean them, you know, every couple of years or whatever, <clears throat> which you don't really have to, they usually get pretty scudged up. So I'm just going to pull the slide right out of it. Flat slide. Yeah, you can see all that sludge right there. Yeah, it's just use. A little bit of oil. And then we'll pull the bowl back off of here. 
I'd like to have an ultrasonic cleaner, but not for the cost of an ultrasonic cleaner, no thanks. The one I wanted is uh, something similar to what Musty One uses. I think this was like 500 bucks or something. Like, yeah, yeah, I can't justify that. I don't make any money doing this kind of stuff. Even working on friends' machines, I don't charge them anything. So, yeah, let's get that. Uh, I'm gonna get a bucket of hot soapy water and I'm gonna start cleaning that. I don't like using solvent on these. I never have. I just like hot soapy water. Proper way to clean Bakuni carburetors is with the ultrasonic cleaner, but like I was saying, I don't have one. So, toothbrush, soapy, bubbly water. I, I don't know, I don't like solvent. This stuff just, like, Dawn dish detergent works just as good as a solvent. And then you just, you take your blow gun and you blow out all the passages. I mean, I used to have solid baths and I love doing it. And, but, God, you start breathing that stuff in all the time, you start feeling kind of gross. I've been uh, really lazy with making videos too. I was hoping I'd get more people watching my, my videos. I mean, my viewers have gone up substantially. And uh, I don't know if anybody's ever noticed, but I don't, like, I don't uh, hustle you to subscribe to my channel. I mean, I know from me as a YouTube viewer, the last thing I want to do is subscribe to a channel. Hell, I just, I just want to go find something to watch. And, you know, go spend an hour or whatever watching something and then go go game on a computer or something. I'm not so much of a, you know, finding a channel and then, you know, liking every single video and subscribing and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I got, I got, obviously I got my good subscriptions like uh, Musty One and Eric the Car Guy and, oh, Watch West Work. He's probably one of my favorite ones. He's not a whole heck of a lot older than me and he gets to work on all sorts of cool stuff. I watched, uh, again, I watched his DT-466E video where he made a mistake and forgot to put bolts in the front. And that's exactly something that I would do, right? You go back and you know that old adage, right? You do it right, we do it right because we do it twice. <laughs> yeah. All right, this water's cold. I'm gonna have to go replenish this. Uh, I'm gonna do this to this carb and to that carb and I'll, uh, I guess I'll bring you back when we're trudging through the snow to put these back in the snowmobile because it snowed about another eight or nine inches now, so. She's up to a little bit over my knees. Oh, you can't even see it. So standing up, I'm about, I don't know, 5'10", 5'11". Snow is just up over my knees, so it's pretty hard to walk down there. Which uh, I was hoping the sled would make it once around the house. And yeah, I didn't get my wish. <laughs> I can't even go in there and pull it out with anything because you know, the old uh, 700 sitting over there with no front end on it. <laughs> so I'm kind of stuck. Yeah, I'm going to go uh, replenish the water and, and uh, clean these carbs up and I'll bring you back when we're ready to go back together. Anything <laughs> 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 
Like, I mean, even look at the bowls. I mean, the bowls are still pretty darn clean. So, I think it was just froze up. I hope it was just froze up, because if it ain't and it don't run, it's staying where it is till spring. Or until I get big blue running, until I get big blue over there going. Which, I ain't even having trouble finding parts for it. You know, it is a 21, now a 22, because it's... New Year's Eve, it is a you know 22 something year old machine. So I might end up just doing my best to straighten everything back out with heating and beating and uh, get her going and just go out and have fun with it. Neither of my machines do I trust leaving the property with. I mean I took Little Blue out, the 600, took that out through the mountains there a few years ago. It was fun but I got lost and just about, you know, did the old, you know, you don't, you're supposed to stay with the group. Well, I didn't. I went off on my own and just about cost me, man. That was pretty, pretty bad. Thank God, buddy, come back to look for me. Yeah, nice and clean. Much cleaner than it was. But what I didn't do is I didn't pull out the choke. Plunger. Just pull this out and have a look inside here. Make sure it's not all scudged up in here too. Which I don't think it is. Eh, it kinda is. Yeah, I should have pulled that out of there. Not ideal using soap and water, but like I say, man, it's way easier on your on your body and your lungs and your guts and stuff if you just use soap and water. You know, that Dawn dish soap. If it's good on animals, it's good on carburetors. Right size to put this back on so I don't screw it up. 14 millimeter. Something I wanted to do, and I've wanted to do for a long time, I wanted to adjust the needle. Because it's always running like it's just a little bit lean. So, give her a little bit more fuel, I think. Let's take those guys off there. Alright, all clean. Already back to go back on there. Yeah. Nice and clean in there now. No scudge. Ooh. Nice and oiled up too. Ready to go. Now we get to go trudge the snow and put her back on there because the sled is sitting out in the snowbank. All right. Uh, I, get to, I guess I guess I'll get to see what my camera does. At, you know, minus thirty degrees Celsius. Wee. Okay, here we go. We'll put her back on. All right. Let's see how well the camera does in the cold. We we'll walk down to where the sled is. Camera in one hand, carbs in the other. Let's see if I can't drop them in the snow. Oh. Okay. I didn't even see the slide yet, we're not there yet. Oh. I'm gonna need a break before I even get there. Hopefully it's not completely frozen in. Uh, if you look up there, you can probably see it up there now. Right there, okay. I turn the camera off. Oh, cough up along here. Okay, okay. Here we are. We are at the snowmobile. Oh, I have to set the camera up somewhere. Oh, what's this? 
some interesting little prints. Is that a mouse? Huh. Okay. Oh, let's see if we can just jam this into the snow. That's all right. There we go. Is that, that good? Okay. Ooh, she's cold. All right. That's where I left off last time. Last time. Let's put you on this side over here. Jam me in the snow there. Oh yeah, this thing's gonna be so stuck in the snow. All right, stab these carbs back in there. If we can't get it on it. Great. Now I got snow in my freshly cleaned carburetor. Okay. The airbox, not worried about. I can go back on after it's in the shop. And this guy's got to go on there too somehow. So you can see I put some gloves on here that are completely frozen on there. Goody. I don't even think I brought a pair of pliers or anything to rip them off of there. Holy shit. Huh. Never seen rubber gloves rip like that before. Oh, it's nice and clean in there still. Oh, we're running out of daylight. Hopefully it stays, uh, yeah, just enough. Just enough daylight. Huh, never heard grub a glove sound like that before. Oh, boy, I hope you can see what I'm doing. All right. Okay, here we go. Carbs back in place. And dang it all, I didn't bring a pair of pliers. Got everything but pliers. There's the fun part, put the fuel lines back on. The absolutely stiff fuel lines. Oh! Right. Yeah, right. Holy oh, man. Is it going on there? It's not going on there. Oh, okay. There's one. Oh, it's hard. Jeez, them things are stiff. It's going to split right down the middle, I think. Okay, I got it on there. Holy cow! Okay, all right. Let's, uh, whoo, that's crazy. And these are gonna be, yeah, no way. No way. Oh, it's cold out here, even with these gloves on. Thank you. 
Oh, things I freaking do. Now I see this rubber will stretch it up. <clears throat> Holy shit. <sighs> Come on, cold man string. <sighs> Holy shit. <sighs> We're getting there. We're halfway there. I got one on. Stretch your one. Okay. All right. Holy crap, I think those are actually on there. Oh my god. <sighs> yeah, a little bit of snow on there. Dang it. All right, Let's see if it'll run. My fancy uh, fancy camera couldn't do the cold. I don't know what point it died, but I got it running. She's uh, running pretty good. Actually, better than I've had in a long time. But yeah, she's buried in there good. So I'm gonna spend some time here. I gotta dig her out. But uh, yeah, so it's not back fully. I still gotta put the airbox back on. So this video is not quite done yet. All right, let's dig it out. All right, she's back in the shop. Wow, man, that sucked. 
like two week job. <laughs> you can see how cold it was out there. Look at the carbs are all frosted up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like the air box is on here loose and floppy, right? These uh, these rings, stuck them back here so I didn't lose them. These guys here, are really, <coughs> really too stiff to be putting this on. They've been sitting out there for god a week and a half. So I'm gonna let it all heat it up. Throw these in a bucket of hot water tomorrow. And I think, I think because it was frozen to the ground, frozen in the snow. I think I was cooking my belt. Because it sure smells like belt. Just have a boo. Yeah. Yeah, that belt's cooked. See that belt? That belt shouldn't be below the edge here on the secondary. It should be proud of that. It should be up like that. Yeah, this belt's cooked. I knew that was going to happen. You can see the belt coming off there on the, on the primary. Oh, well. I got a spare belt kicking around here somewhere. I used to have one sled but you know i got a spare part sled right here or vice versa i can always take all that steering components and stuff and put it on that sled but i want two sleds my kids want one to run around on so i'm gonna end this clip tonight and uh i'm cold i'm gonna pick her up tomorrow we'll put the air box back on get it all buttoned up and uh call that one for a win still still trying to decide what i'm gonna do with this one parts are too expensive i might just reuse those shocks and just custom something up here i don't know and i don't know what i'm gonna do with my fancy camera over there on the, on the tripod i thought it could handle a cold apparently not okay that's it i'm done for tonight it's just proof how cold she is out there look at that that's just from running outside yeah hopefully all this stuff warms up and dries out that's why i don't like leaving these machines outside you get stuff like that and you can you know you can leave it inside that'll uh liquid up and then it'll dry out in here yeah that's where we are goodbye and it's the next day so i actually made a mistake when i set the needles on there i uh i went the wrong way and it was struggling to make it up to the house the flyers So I'm going to pull those needles out and set them properly. I think I'm going to pull the carbs up again. And uh, I set the air screws and I went the wrong way on the air screws too. So I kind of screwed a bunch of stuff up yesterday. So, pull that guy off of there. And then you pull the caps off. Pull the needles out and set the needles again. Hopefully you can see I got you kind of set up on the sled here. See my hands? Okay. Need a magnetic tray. All right. Really don't want to lose anything, especially down inside there. You never get them back. Okay, so I just want the needle. There's the needle. And if you look at the needle, I've got it on the bottom. I should have it on. What is that? Wa water in there. Huh, I wonder if I got water in my gas again. I shouldn't. Hmm. I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull the e clip off of here. And I'm going to put it right at the top. A little less fuel. I think this engine's getting a little tired. I did a top end on it probably you know, seven, eight years ago.
Oh. Oh no, I magnetized my. <laughs> I had a magnetic tray, now it's magnetized. Let's see if I can get it down in there. Sometimes you wonder about engineers and the way they design things. Why would you design this arm so you couldn't get this screw out? Or, you can't tighten it up because you can't seat it in there. Oh, there we go. Okay, right, one done. So I'm not going to film the next one, it's the same thing, I'm just going to pull that out, change the needle, and put it back in there. Okay, so I got that all done, now I'm going to get into the more, more of the fine tuning, and uh, get under there and adjust those air screws again. Hopefully I don't have to take this all apart again, I'm just going to pull the carbs out. Oh yeah, way easier when they're not frozen. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is easily accessible here. So you're not going to be able to see, but the air screws, there's one here, and there's one here, and they're underneath, they're underneath, so you got to screw like that. So, screw them all the way back in, I think I got them at two and a half, I think I'm going to go out at three. So there's, I need my light. So there's closed, we're going to do one. Two, three, I'm gonna go three and a half. Three and a half. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, and that fuel line's coming off. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it goes. Off goes the fuel line. Ah. And there goes the other one. Okay, so three and a half, right? And now I'm dripping gas. Shit. Shit. Making a mess. I'm gonna blow myself up when I try to start it. There's all the way closed. So we go one, two, three, and a half. Perfect. Now I can put these fuel lines back on and slap the air box on. All right, we are ready for the air box, finally. Yeah, I gotta put the boost bottle on there first. What this is here is a boost bottle. So when you uh, crack her wide open, when you go to give her up a hill, you got that air ready to go. It's kind of a weird design, but it's a, yeah. It's a, I actually suppose it holds more of a charge. It holds a charge. Not just air, because it's after the carbs. I suppose if it was before the carbs, it would just be like a little air box. Okay, time for the air box. Hopefully this video is not too boring so far. So I won't have to soak these in hot water, like I said previous. Uh, they soften up pretty good during the shop. They're pretty squishy. So, I'm just gonna 
slap them on there and oh oh this thing stinks it stinks like belt Let's see if I, I have to see if I can find that other belt I had I know I had a spare belt for this sled somewhere that is the wrong side I'll put this one over here so it's somewhat accessible when it's on the machine you know, unlike most modern engineers You know what's funny is when you look at something that was uh, engineered in such a way where you could fix it, you would actually take things apart without taking half an engine apart, mainly like new vehicles today. You got to think, I wonder if that engineer, I wonder if his parents or family member was an automotive mechanic and had some input as to how he built stuff. Now you hear a lot about mechanics complaining about engineers, but if, when you actually get your hands dirty and get in there and start fixing stuff, you really understand the truth and what they're talking about and how they're saying and how bad things are engineered. It's almost embarrassing. Okay, so uh, we'll put this one like that. Actually, we can put these on afterwards because we can stretch them. We can stretch them open. Probably not recommended, but that's the way I like doing it. Okay, so we gotta pull this fuel line off of here. So I like these sleds because the fuel line is down here and it has to get pumped up and over and down to the fuel pump down here. I've always liked that because I've ridden a sled where it goes right from the gas tank down to the fuel pump and the carb and I was working on a buddy's sled and it drained the whole tank into my shop because the check valve inside here wasn't working right in the fuel pump. Yeah, that was a mess and a half. Come in for a five minute job and the whole shop smelled like gas. All right. Ready for the air box. I'm gonna have to tidy up the wiring over here too. It's looking kind of gross. It's amazingly, this, this air box is held on by one 10 mil, one 10 mil bolt right here that goes right to the frame right there. Okay, let's see if I can get this on here without too much of a hassle. This is my least favorite job, is putting these air boxes back in. Because you can never get these freaking boots on here. Holy crap on a stick. I actually got them on there. Beautiful. Now I get those clamps on there. So I like these style clamps that Yamaha uses. Because you can take them right off and you can just open them up. Probably not recommended, but the way I like doing it, you just open it up, flip it around. Okay, I had to make an adjustment here. Can't get my hands in there. I wonder if I can turn this so you can actually see what I'm doing. Got the camera kind of set up on the uh, on the side of the sled, so I can't really adjust it that much. Or should be going for a tumble. Okay, one down, one to go. I want to be able to adjust the camera though so you can actually see what the heck it is that I'm doing. I don't know. Where do we put the legs? Right down there like that, something like so. Is that going to work? You see what I'm doing now? 
Probably not. Is that gonna fall? Uh, yeah, probably. But oh well. Uh-huh. How in the hell am I gonna get that one on there? Suppose I could have started with taking the bolt out of here. Alright, well you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing, I'm just going to put this clamp back on there and then button some of the wiring up. Alright, it's all back together, so she can fire up here. See how uh, stinky and smoky she'll be. Holy crap, I can breathe in my shop. Imagine that. Not that smoky at all. I think it got her set just right. But uh, the mommy wagon's gotta come out of the shop first. Then for a rip, hee haw. Okay, let's see if it's time to go play. baby's running better than I've had in a long time. Holy crap, there's a lot of snow here. Ooh, I need a GoPro. I got snows like three feet deep. Woo! All right. Let's call this one done. Hey. Where's my thumb? There's my thumb. Hey.